thank you everyone for attending. Uh, this is Jack Lossick. I'm with IDEX Solutions here in Chicago. We're going to be presenting uh, Flow EFD for CATIA version V5. And we're going to be uh, showing you some best practices as well as the capabilities of applying CFD during the design process. Uh, Nate Hanlon from Mental Graphics will be presenting. Uh, Nate, you on? Yep, that's me. All right. Well, I guess we could uh, get going with this. I just wanted to uh, thank everyone for attending, and um, we're going to be handing this over to Nate, who will be driving the uh, demonstration for everyone. Okay. Um, well, Ned, did you have a couple things you want to say before we get moving? Uh, oh, yeah, actually, I do. Do you uh, do you see my screen, everyone? Uh, can't see it yet. There, I think it's coming up here. Okay, you guys, tell me, tell me when you see it. Give me a second. It's coming up. Coming up. Everybody, have me now. Gotcha. Uh, everybody can see a slide that says Seven uh, Key Technologies, right? Yeah. Okay, well, let's move forward then. Okay, as you can see, my name is Ned Brad. I'm Title uh, American Channel Sales Manager with the Mechanical Analysis Division of uh, Mentor Graphics. I'm going to go a, a very short presentation, and we're going to spend most of the time today actually viewing the product. Uh, but the information I have to share, especially on these seven key technologies, we consider critically important to anybody making a decision to go with the CFD uh, package. So I'll go straight into it right now. Only one slide on uh, Mentor Graphics. And the reason we put this in here is when people think of Mentor, they normally think of electronics applications, and certainly um, they should for good reason. But a few years ago, uh, Mentor Graphics uh, made a move to get into the mechanical world in the CFD market, and they did that through acquisition of several um, companies. Um, and so we're actually well entrenched into this now worldwide. And the positive thing about this is with annual revenues of a of over a billion dollars, a very large company all over the world, uh, deep pockets. Uh, a lot of that money has really been put into growing the mechanical analysis division, which actually is the largest or fastest growing uh, division within Mentor. So when you think of Mentor now, you've got to think of mechanical. All right, so let's get directly into the seven key technologies. And most, if not all of these, or at least to some degree, uh, Nate will uh, refer back to as he goes through his presentation. Um, First off, that actually says pro engineer, but it should say uh, it should say Katia. But anyway, full AFD. First off, the first key technology that it fits directly into your design processes, and it does this by being able to use existing data as the basis of the analysis, analysis, so that you can save enormous amounts of time. Importing geometry into, say, a non-embedded CAD CFD software is usually, in fact, almost always the most time-consuming part of the process, and the main reason why well, it usually takes two to three weeks to get results back. And 4FT is the only fully embedded tool in all of the leading CAD packages, and it enables you to analyze, optimize designs directly inside of your CAD package with no translation of geometry or copies in order to keep pace of it as your ongoing design changes. It's a real advantage. Now, the second there, it says, you see where it says automatic detection of fluid region. 4FT also offers great time-saving features in this way, uh, such as automatic detection of the fluid regions. Uh, most CFD programs require you to create phantom objects to represent the fluid regions. So these are the empty regions through which the fluid actually flows. And this is an extremely time-consuming process because you need to identify each region manually by picking them and then create geometry to fill in whereas Flow EFD automatically differentiates between the solid and the fluid regions and automatically creates the fluid domain. Okay. User interface, actually the interface itself, it features an extremely intuitive interface because it was developed by engineers for engineers. And as you guys know, engineers talk in terms such as things like walls, inlets, outlets, as opposed to uh, the technical jargon that you uh, typically see with traditional CFD programs. 
In fact, FluentD is so easy to use that most engineers require less than eight hours of training before they're able to build, solve, post-process their own analysis cases, whereas a traditional CFD user can expect a much longer um, learning curve. And one of the reasons that you're able to come up to speed so quick is that the product is wizard-driven, so it guides you along the analysis process and makes it easy to prepare your models for the analysis. So once you've solved the problem, it offers you a wide range of visual, visual, visualization and animation tools. And for example, um, detailed reports can be created at a Microsoft Office Pro um, format simply with the touch of a button. Animations in the form of AVI files are very easily produced. The third uh, key technology relates to our meshing technique. Now, next to importing geometry, meshing is the most time-consuming aspect of an analysis. You know, uh, in some uh, CFD tools, this is referred to as a uh, black art, and so some of the vendors have chosen to offer only a black box type of approach. But our meshing is completely transparent, and you retain as much or as little control as you need. FluidD features automatic meshing for fluid and solid regions, including automatic mesh refinement or unrefinement, which adapts to geometrical uh, and or physical requirements. For example, thin, narrow channels, areas of high temperature, uh, flow gradient, and things like this. Thanks to this technology, you can expect to spend significantly less time on meshing with flow EFD than you do on the traditional CFD tools. Now, the fourth key technology works hand in hand with our meshing technology. Uh, FlowFT features a grid independent near wall modeling using what we call partial cells technology. Now, this technology enables you to simulate the boundary layer phenomena for fluid flow and heat transfer effects without needing a very fine mesh close to the solid surfaces. Uh, this technology results in a much shorter solve times than typical CFD softwares. The seventh key technology uh, relates to the way that Flow EFD handles the transition between laminar and turbulent flow. Unlike traditional CFD codes, Flow EFD doesn't require you to input specific information in order to simulate transitional flow characteristics because it supports laminar, transitional, and turbulent flow automatically and within the same model. So you don't need to worry about finding where or if the flow characteristics change within the model. The software takes care of it for you. All right, now the last three technologies have dealt with the steps in the process of dealing with results accuracy. The sixth key technology deals with the solution phase. Now, let's face it, there's nothing more aggravating than setting up a session, turning hours later to find that the software has failed to provide a solution due to a numerical convergence problem. With Flow FD, you get real-time feedback about the solution progress such as things like the convergence of the solution or residual areas of uh, errors, uh, monitor point values, and things like this. Uh, the real-time feedback can be a great time saver as you start to get an idea of the general solution path. So if you see any unexpected results, you can immediately stop flow EFD instead of having to wait for hours to, uh, uh, to see what the, what the issue is and then put you back to square one. When the problem is set up correctly, the first run converges every time. Now, the seventh and last um, key technology really shows the, the real power that Flow AFD has, and that's the cloning feature. This feature makes it easy to conduct what-if analysis, and that's where the real-time savings comes in. Well, since traditional CFD codes are not MCAD-centric, to conduct a what-if analysis, you need to modify your geometry in CAD, re-import the model into the application, prepare it for analysis, and remesh it every time every time you want to analyze a different version of your model. However, with Flow EFD, you simply create multiple variations of your design simply by modifying your solid model within your CAD application without having to reapply the loads, the boundary condition, the material properties, or any of that. And you can, you can immediately analyze them. And that's why Flow EFD fits within your design process without requiring you to change the way you design to suit the application. Now, with that and those seven key technologies, we'll turn this over to Nate, who will uh, show you some of those. And Nate, if you'll refer back to me as you go through the application, that'd be uh, much appreciated. Thank you. OK, 
Okay, thanks a lot, Ned. Um, and hopefully everyone can see my monitor and I just get some feedback on whether that's the case. You guys, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, we can see you. Okay, very good. Thanks a bunch. All right, um, so the model that we're going to be looking at today uh, is a simple ball valve. Um, now, it's, it's not all that complex, but uh, I think we're going to get a good sense of uh, the capabilities of uh, flow EFD for the TFV5. Um, the goal of the analysis today is going to be uh, to compare the pressure drop um, through this valve with two different ball designs. Um, and the first thing that you're going to see is, is that, uh, as Ned was indicating, we are directly embedded in uh, to TFV5, where we are actually implemented as a separate workbench uh, within the V5 interface. So I'll go ahead and click over to the, V5, or to the Flow EFD uh, workbench, and what we see here is we've got a couple of projects. Um, now, the first one here is already solved, and so I, I want to show you a couple of things um, just right off the bat. I'm going to go ahead and show this uh, plot plane. I'll put the uh, model in transparent view so that we can actually see uh, some, some results right off the bat. Um, now, the, uh, the tricky part in any uh, CFD software is, uh, is really that interaction between the solid uh, and the fluid, um, where the fluid slows down, and in some cases, it's uh, going to exchange heat with that surface. Uh, now, typically, this will require uh, multiple grid cells near that surface uh, and potentially an iterative uh, grid adjustment to achieve uh, accurate results. So, flow EFD uh, needs only one grid cell near the surface in order to capture those physics. Uh, really without sacrificing accuracy. Um, so this is critical to efficiently analyzing production level CAD models uh, with many complex and curved surfaces. Um, now let, I'm going to take, take you through, um, you know, we, we can see in this area we've got some, some sharp uh, gradients uh, or sharp curves in, in the geometry. And that's going to lead to uh, sharp gradients in the velocity fields um, and so I want to show you how that's uh, handled uh, just quickly with uh, the mesh. Here. We're going to see here, uh, once I show you the mesh, that you know, out in this area where there's not a whole heck of a lot going on, the, the mesher has um, you know, left us with a relatively coarse mesh. But as we get into the, the curved surfaces, we can see that the mesher has, has refined on those areas. And we'll take a look more. Um, at that meshing technology a little bit uh, later on in the demo, but uh, just wanted to point that right off the bat. Um, okay, so um, let's take a look at a couple other um, plot or a couple other post-processing parameters before we get into the uh, setting up a model and, and looking at our, our second uh, design. Um, th these plot planes, uh, you know, this is pretty self-explanatory. We can see um, pretty much any parameter that you'd really want to look at, you know, velocity, pressure, temperature, density, um, and a number of others. Um, you can view uh, your mesh. You can also view uh, you know, velocity vectors um, all with plot planes. Um, another type of post-processing post parameter that you can look at is uh, these three-dimensional flow trajectories. Now, in this model, we don't necessarily have uh, – flow trajectories that are all that interesting, but you can imagine in a significantly more complex model, these can give you a good indication of what's going on in three dimensions. Um, on top of showing these three-dimensional uh, flow trajectories, we can also quickly animate those uh, simply by hitting play. And now you can see those flow trajectories um, as they move through the system. Uh, and as Ned was indicating a little earlier, these types of animations can uh, be exported as, as AVI files, and you know, they're embedded from, you know, in any kind of report, uh, PowerPoint or otherwise. Okay. 
so we'll move on. Um, I wanted to show you this uh, this other type of plot as well um, that we call uh, an ISO service. Now, the reason I wanted to show you this is because what this is going to do is give you the ability to visualize two separate parameters at once. Okay, so. Um, in this example, what I'm going to do is show you an ISO surface of velocity at a particular speed, and I'm going to color the surface of that plot with the local pressure. Okay, so what we're seeing here is a velocity plot everywhere in the model where we're seeing 3.4 meters per second um, and seeing uh, a pressure of the uh, the pressure plots are actually varying um, on the, that ISO surface, okay? And we can, of course, move that velocity plot throughout our model uh, to really get a good sense of what's going on with both parameters at once. In this case, we see uh, velocity speeding up as we hit the the, uh, the ball, at, which which actually is what we would expect in this case, and we're seeing pressure being higher in the upstream than in the downstream, which, again, we would expect. Okay, so I'll go ahead and hide that ISO surface. Okay, so what we've looked at so far are ways that you can get graphical results out of the analysis. Um, there's also uh, several different ways where you can get numerical results out of the analysis. Um, the first one that I'm going to show you is an XY plot. Now we can see in our CATIA model we actually have a sketch that runs down the center of the flow path here through the through the ball, out the ball, and also upstream. Now what I can do with this sketch is actually uh, obtain data at that location uh, throughout the model. And so I'll go ahead and show you how that's defined. Now, we can look at any parameter we want to. Uh, in this case, I'm going to take a look at pressure and velocity along that line. So let's hit apply here. And this is, again, going to highlight one of those key technologies that Ned was referring to uh, that we actually are embedded or we are we're linked directly with the Microsoft Office suite. So, um, you know, you can see uh, reports in, in uh, automatic uh, automatically generate reports in, in uh, Microsoft Word, and you can also see um, numerical data in uh, Excel. Okay, so this this here is the velocity along that line, and we've also got our pressure along that line, which again we would expect you know pressure in the upstream area being higher and reducing down to our environment pressure on the other side, and the velocity at, at a relatively low speed uh, at the beginning flowing through the ball, and then flowing out of the ball, okay? Um, now, I'm going to save this out as a, an XLS um, because I'm going to show you something neat that you can do with this a little bit later. Okay, and I'll go ahead and close that out. Okay, uh, now, uh, I also wanted to show you that uh, that automatic uh, report generation. So let's take a look at that. Going to click on report here. Okay. Um, I'm going to generate a new report based on um, one of the templates that comes embedded in the software. And so uh, just take a look at uh, the results template. Okay, we can see here that it's generating that um, that report. It should complete here in just a minute. Okay, and now we have this one uh, attached to this uh, particular model. And here's that report that was generated. Now, again, I just generate a results report. Um, you could also generate a report uh, that includes all the input data as well. But here we see our goals, um, which we'll talk about more in a minute. Um, but one of the neat things that you can do with these, these reports is I can take this current image and I can add that to the report. So we'll see right here that if I scroll all the way down, 
I've got my current image. Now this could include uh, you know, any plot planes uh, that you want, an ISO surface, for example, uh, that could all be in that image, um, and which is actually something I'll go ahead and do now. Show this cut plot. And what I'll do is uh, include that at the end of our report. So we'll see now that I should have the image right there in the report. Okay, so let's just hold on to that for now. Go ahead and close that out. So that, that basically walks you through how you would run through and post process uh, a model. Now, one of the things I wanted to show you is the other uh, variation of this ball valve that we're going to be looking at. I'm going to click over to this guy, and we'll see in this case, we've got our uh, ball valve. That the, the actual ball has been, uh, we've got chamfers on this ball valve, whereas before that was a sharp edge, okay? So we wanted to take a look at how that uh, varied the pressure um, across the valve. Um, let's take a look. I want to show you the, the, uh, the settings. Um, I could go through and set up a new project with the wizard here, um, but I'll show you the equivalent. Uh, we'll walk through all the settings that are set in that wizard. Um, now, the, the first thing that you would see uh, in that wizard is uh, the analysis type. You know, we need to tell Flow EFD what type of analysis we're going to be considering or what type of analysis we're going to be considering. In this case, uh, we've got an internal flow problem. We're not considering any of the flow on the outside of the valve. Um, we're not, we're going to choose not to include the heat transfer in this particular calculation because it's not something we're interested in. Uh, if you're interested in doing a heat transfer calculation, you just would simply just click that checkbox. That would include convection and conduction. If you needed to include radiation, you would simply click this radiation uh, checkbox, and then you would be able to calculate the radiation in your uh, calculation. Uh, we could also do a transient uh, simulation, um, or uh, we could consider rotating geometry. So if you have an application where you need to analyze uh, a rotating fan blade or a rotating pump impeller is certainly certainly something you'd be able to do uh, with Flow EFD. Okay. Uh, in the next the next step in the wizard would require you to uh, specify the type of fluid that you're looking for uh, or that you're looking to use. Uh, in in our case, we would have we had water, and so um, we'd specify water here in our uh, liquid um, or here in our fluid. Um, and this, I wanted to, to emphasize this, that this is one of the points that Ned was talking about as he went through his slide. Uh, the ability to uh, consider laminar and turbulent flow in the same model. Uh, now, typically uh, with CFD software, you have to have this information up front. You have to have, you need to tell the CFD software what type of flow regime you're expecting to see in the model. Um, with Flow EFD, uh, the solver will actually apply the, the appropriate variables in the solver um, at the local, uh, locally, uh, you know, if you have laminar in one area and turbulent uh, in another area of the model, uh, Flow EFD is actually able to detect that as the solve or as the solution develops and apply the right solver variables. Okay, so that's all under the fluids. Um, you'd specify a solid. This is especially important if you're considering heat transfer, uh, as this gives you um, your uh, thermal conductivities and specific heats uh, and all the things that you need to transfer or to uh, consider heat transfer. And then finally, the, the initial conditions uh, where you're simply specifying the um, ambient uh, conditions. Uh, and your the uh, parameters that you want to, or the uh, values that you're initializing from. Okay, so that is the things that you would set up during the wizard. Um, there's also one last thing uh, 
that you would set up, and that is your your mesh settings. Um, this is where you would tell Flow EFD how fine you want to resolve that geometry. You know, is it important uh, to resolve um, any gaps that are less than or more than this specific size? Okay, um, it is a drop down uh, at the heart of it, where you uh, a three is, is your average resolution. And you can always go up from there if, if you really are at, uh, you, know, you need to validate against a test or um, get really, really accurate results and you're not concerned about how long it takes to solve. Okay, so those are all the things that you would be required uh, to set, that would be required to set up the model. Um, the other thing is uh, that I want to show you is just to emphasize that um, since we're embedded in Tia V5, you are actually able to use your design tables uh, to change the geometry. And so in our case, we modified this fillet that went on to the ball valve. Well, that, that was a parameter that we specified in a design table, and we uh, applied that to our uh, Flow EFD project simply by linking it the design table to this individual project. And so that's how we got to this point in uh, project one, iteration one, okay? Uh, now I've got the results. Uh, this has already been solved, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and load up the results. And uh, at this point, really what I wanna focus on is just comparing those pressure plots or the, the pressure boundary condition, or sorry, the pressure uh, results. Okay, so I load up the results and then just very quickly uh, put us into a top view of the ball valve. And I'll go ahead and hide that geometry and pull up this cut plot. So this is again that the that velocity, or sorry, this is pressure. Uh, in at that location in the ball valve, okay? So we want to compare this to our previous uh, case with the without the chamfers, okay? So I still have this report open, and actually I think I'm going to have to go back and grab another image here from the other report or from the other configuration. So uh, let me take a step backwards here. And what we'll do is uh, modify this cut plot. And what we want to show is our pressure. Okay, we really don't need the mesh here. So let's go ahead and um, use this image uh, and compare that to the other image. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use the report. Definition here. I'm going to attach that report. And we're going to include this image to the report. Now I have this image, and we can simply compare these two results side by side. Okay, so that, that really just gives you an idea uh, of how easy it can be to compare multiple cases against each other uh, using Flow EFD. Okay, um, that basically takes me to the end of what I wanted to show you. Um, and I think at this point, what I'd like to do is just open it up uh, to take questions.
Does anyone have any questions? This is Jack. Okay, well, if there's no questions, I think I'll just hand it off to Jack, and we'll uh, go ahead and close up the session for today. All right. Well, I would like to thank everyone for their attendance. Um, if there are any questions in regards to Flow EFD, be it uh, licensing, pricing, or additional capabilities, you can feel free to contact us at uh, sales at idexsolutions.com. You can see the website right there. Or you can visit our website at idexsolutions.com and click the contacts, and it will take you to the different geographical regions where you will find individual contacts there for sales. If there are no other questions, I'd like to thank everyone for attending, and we will talk to you later.